Boxing King Media in association with Box. You're delighted to have with me face to face Spencer Fear on the Knowledge. Spence, great to see you in your end, South London. How are we keeping? I'm great, you know, and um, even better for seeing you, Raz. And it was a fantastic event that they just had with this open workout, especially in light of what happened last week with the young girl, Ileana Adam. It was a really, really good turnout of people and it was bringing awareness to, to the area and also showing young people that they, who, they do have a lot to strive for. And I thought that was excellent by a boxer. I thought boxer did a really good job. What influence can boxing give the, the people of you know, South London and, and the communities here? What can boxing bring to them? I don't think it's boxing, I think it's direction. If there's correct direction inside of anything, then if there's correct direction, um, boxing can do that, but then boxing's got a lot of things that it needs to improve on in it, within itself. But what we can say is, like, just take the two combatants that are going to be fighting on the 21st of October, and Joshua Boatsy and Dan Aziz. Both are university graduates, right? They're not just simple guys who say, oh, I want to go on box. And no, they're very, they're highly educated young men who could have most probably gone into a plethora of different areas of employment, but they chose boxing because boxing actually chose them and they're going out to do what they have to do and both are unbeaten fighters. Dan Aziz has won every conceivable title available to win. And he's done it the authenticity route of Southern area, English, British, Commonwealth, European. You don't see that. He's done that, so all the credit in the world should be given to him. And Dan Aziz is a massive overachiever, all right? But the reason why he's had this success is because he identifies with who he is. And he's, he's, uh, he's become uh, comfortable with who he is. I think Joshua Watts is still finding who he is. There's a difference. So it's like this fight's about identity crisis fight. One guy actually knows who he is. One guy searches to find out who he is. But even in the fact that he searches to find out who he is, he's still a bloody good fighter. Spence, I'll reserve going into too much detail on this fight until fight week, because I'm sure you'll be there. Um, but I haven't actually spoken to you, although we speak quite a lot um, about Joe Joyce's loss to Zidi Zhang. A lot, of, a lot of criticism from a lot of people. Tony Birdie made some comments about Joe Joyce. Um, punch resistance had gone. Joe Joyce is at British level and, and Fabio Wardley could potentially beat him. But why is boxing the only sport that's like this? At one minute, you're a hero, and then the next, next minute, you don't belong at that level. Look, it's absolute nonsense. Joe Joyce is still a world-class fighter. He's just met, he's Ken Norton, and that's all he is. Um, Zili Zhang is Ken Norton. Anybody else, I think Joe Joyce wouldn't perform like that. But Zili Zhang is just certain guys who you actually get your number and he's got his number. I wouldn't have turned around and said to Joe Joyce to go take the re return, but that's down to his management team and everybody else. And I'm going to be real, his management team very inexperienced. I'm going to keep it real. Shane Watson's a lovely you, I love him to bits, good guy. But you, well, you know, well, you're just coming to boxing with your gun. You're just coming to, come on, let's be real. And that's, these are words of Clifton Mitchell. And I'm looking at it and saying, yeah, he is just coming to the game just the other day, but his, his trainers and that, Ishmael Salas, them, them guys know boxing, you know what I mean? But what I'm saying is, I wouldn't have been in a rush to take the rematch, but he's thinking, oh, where am I going to go? Where am I going to go from here? And look at Joe's age and blah, blah, blah. And they use all these things as excuses. You're meant to build fighters. I thought he was built correctly on how when he turned pro, the type of fighters that he was going into. He was going in with really good guys early on and just doing a job on them. But sometimes you can meet someone and they could be a bogeyman. I just believe that Zili Zhang is his bogeyman. We'll come to Fury Usyk, but the fact that Fury Usyk has signed, it's going to happen. It, potentially, I'm saying potentially, by the end of the fight or a few months down the line, though some of the belts might become vacant. They will. So they do you feel like Joe can still get himself in that mix? Of course he can. Of course he can, because end of the day, he's still a top 10 heavyweight. He just met a man that's got your number. That's all it is, right? But then, this is what I'm saying to say, how people, were in, especially guys who've never been punched in the head, are so quick to criticize um, guys who are, being, who, who are doing this, but doing it for the entertainment of, of the fans. I'm saying, bro, 
It's like, now Joe Joyce is rubbish. Well, hold up a second. Just a few months ago, we were saying he's the third best heavyweight in the world. Do you know what I mean? And Josh was just stay away from him. Now, all of a sudden, now you can't fight? Come on, man, make your mind up. No, the guy can fight. Zilli Zhang just got his number. And he's got to take it as that. Zilli Zhang got my number. Spence, I spoke to KD from 258 Management, part of Anti Joshua's team uh, a couple of days ago. And he said that Anti Joshua was ticking, uh, kind of just ticking away with, with Ben Davison uh, at the moment. Just kind of want you, your reaction about Joshua and kind of training with someone who used to train Tyson Fury. What difference does that make? It doesn't make a difference. He's, if he's ticking over, let him tick over. But me personally, If he ticks over, when someone says I'm just ticking over, really and truly you're going to leave the trainer there with, you know, you do realise that. I'm talking from experience, let's be real. Now I'm saying, are you leaving Derek James now? Because Derek James, when you went to the camp, yeah, had one undisputed champion, right? And one, and one unified champion. And they have both lost subsequently to you going into that camp. And you're thinking, boy, these guys, maybe this guy ain't for me, you know? And you've gone? Or... You know how boxing is, everyone's got opinions. Well, especially when it comes to training, like, oh, he can't train, this one can't train. Now, all of a sudden, I'm seeing like, what am I seeing? I'm, I'm seeing um, Mace and, and Cameron, they got a wicked podcast. But, you know what I mean, Cameron's saying, ah, oh, I, I can't see how Derek James became trainer of the year. Come on, man, Derek James is a fucking, he's a good trainer. I'm just going to be real, he's a good trainer, bro. Now, all of a sudden, now he can't train? This is like, this same thing what, what, what applies to fighters. We apply the same thing to trainers. You know what I mean? And that's why I am so incredible with boxing history. So people can say, well, they go, no one can't test me on history. I'll destroy anybody for fun. And they know it as well. You know what I mean? And we're in Black History Month as well right now. So I, I've got even more reasons about history. But it is what it is. Hypothetically, if Joshua has left Derek James or is leaving Derek James, what would you make up of this combination of Joshua and Ben Davidson? Listen, man. Like I said, Joshua has to do what he thinks is right for him and if he can find that fit, do you know what I mean? And if he finds that fit there, then so be it. Do you know what I mean? Maybe, I don't know, you know what I mean? That's, that's all I can say, because like, you got one career. Joshua's made a shitload of money, you know what I mean? Maybe he feels like, right, this is the right place for me to be at. I can't, I'm not advising any Joshua like that. We speak, I drop in little pointers, but that's, he got to do what's right for him. You know what I mean? Looks like Fury Usyk is going to happen. We're going to see an undisputed fight. Finally, Spence sign and see. I just spoke to Johnny Nelson and he goes, listen, until they get into the ring, I don't believe it. Johnny Nelson took the words right out of my mouth. Until they walk into the ring, maybe this could be a play just to boost up his fight against, uh, against Nganu. You know what I mean? Love, I'm coming, I'm coming. Love. Wait, wait, I'm coming. All right. One second, big man. Just tell me your number in there, yeah? Sorry about this, but you know how it goes. You know what I mean? I gotta show love, I gotta show love to the people. No, I'm saying straight standard, yeah? Until I see them two men walking into the ring, that's when I believe the fight's gonna happen. I'm not gonna get gassed over this thing. They've done it to me with the Joshua thing. It's over the line, it's signed. Do you remember that? I'm getting gassed, yes, Fury and Joshua. Ain't never happens. So oh no, you're not tricking me again. Until I see you walking into the ring, then I'm going to say, yes, it's happening. But with the Saudis who have delivered boxing in their region over the last couple of years, they've said that it's going to take place in Saudi Arabia, potentially sometime end of December or January. And further, Frank Warren has said that we will announce the day after the Nganu fight. I saw you with um, brother Abdullah the other day, yeah? Is that what he said to you? Did he say that to you? He didn't say that to me, no. Well, then I'm not listening to none of it, because I know he, he run, he, he's the head of school challenge, uh, for the boxing, and as he says it, then I'm gonna agree with it. I know he's a beautiful human being, a beautiful brother, and I know that he's not gonna lie. So I'll wait for him to come out with it, then I'm saying, yep, it's on. Well, we'll wait forward to, we'll wait for a date, and uh, hopefully we'll do something around that fight then. Um, Spence, can I ask you, um, a couple of weeks ago, we saw a documentary on Channel 4 about the British board, racism, Islamophobia, uh, and other accusations. Um, Ruxana Begum, who was one of the individuals on that, Ruxana Begum, the female, oh, the female yeah, right. she was one of the individuals on uh, that documentary alongside with two referees. I'm sure you've seen it. Just your reaction and part, part, second part of the question is, have you had or, or, or seen or felt any type of dis 
you know, discrimination of any sort from the board? From the board of control, discrimination. Let me tell you this now, yeah? I've been a license holder of the British Board of Control since 1997. I have never, ever, ever faced any form of racism, ever, from the British Board of Control. I've faced racism inside of boxing, but never from the Board of Control. The people in the Board of Control I regard as friends, close friends, Mick Collier, close friend. Dennis Gil Martin used to be the T-boy down at Frank Warren's office when I turned pro, right? And he was the one also that would, would be following you up to, to give me my fight dates. Right? So I've never ever faced any form of racism from the British Border Control. And I'm a person that looks for racism hard. So no, I can't I can't go in that thing like it's yeah, love. I can't go in the thing and say the British Border Control are racism. When you're dealing with racism, racism is a societal issue that can happen to go into sport. Now I'm not saying those other people haven't experienced racism, right? But Ian John Lewis. You want to find your blackness now? Shut up, man. And I like Ian, but I'm going to be real. Because when Jeff Hines was complaining about racism and white people were saying, now this is racism, what's happening to Jeff Hines. And he came to other black board members, yeah, or holders, they turned their back on him. And now all of a sudden now, because things haven't gone your way, let's keep this thing totally 100, right? If it was racism to do with Ian John Lewis, I would say, yes, it's racism. I would be the first to say it. Before he even thought that'd be racism, I would say it is. On his case here, it isn't. His case here is because of gross incompetence of him, how he scores fights. Let's be real. Don't bother calling back eyes racist. When it fits now, I fit the narrative now. Now you want to, brother, let's keep this thing 100, yeah? I'm keeping this thing 100. The young lady who was screaming at racism and saying like, oh, it's lemophobia because some bald person says you couldn't wear as she, right, she said she was trying to be respectful. I've been on your Instagram, sis. The pictures that you got are pretty provocative, so I don't see you re representing Islam there. And I can say that I'm Muslim. So don't pick, people are picking and choosing when, it's, when it suits for you. Do you get what I'm trying to say to you? Like, everybody's on this, like, like, I've been in certain positions. Like, when I was at Sky, and I was to argue vehemently about the lack of diversity, and nobody wasn't backing me up. George Floyd died, then everyone's on this diversity thing now. Oh, when I was going on Black Lives Matter marches, it was me, Akala, Travis, who else I seen? Cole John, go for the whole list of, of guys. Akala, my brother, that's the first time I met him. We're on the Black Lives Matter march, and, and guys who are professional boxers are looking and say, boy, Spence, but you're at Sky, you've got to be careful. I said, wait a minute, I, am I not black? And my life does matter, so therefore, I'm not for the narrative. The narrative of Black Lives Matter, I'm for 100%. The organization, I'm not for it. I'm out there. I've went to loads of people who are working at Sky. Are you coming on the march? They're looking at me, oh no, we can't go there, you little slave mind people. I ain't one of those Negroes. I'm not. I'm just keeping the thing 100. So, and it's not like for us to be tearing down. People want to scream racism when it fits their narrative. You know what I mean? Come on, let's be real. It's nonsense. What happened was, the only one inside of that documentary, it was a very, very good documentary that was made, yeah? My guy Jordan made it at Channel 4. The only one that could say it's racism and I could say, hmm, maybe it was a bit dodgy, is, is Jeff Hines. Because Jeff Hines is the most decorated uh, uh, referee in the, in the country and he was not given the position to become a star referee, right? So for that, he's the only one that could say hey, it could be racism and I could be like, hmm, maybe. But I'm saying, if I, Spencer Fairon, face any racism from the board, never in my life. You know what I mean? In fact, I've been given a lot, lots of squeezes from the border control. I have been fined many times when I was, when I was managing and promoting. I remember one time I got fined about 500 pounds and I went into the border control and I gave them 500 pounds in pennies because I was that pissed. But you know what? I can't turn around and say that was because of racism. That's because I actually, I actually went against the rules on certain things that I'm not, I don't care to get into. But it is what it is, man, it is what it is. But this border control racism thing, bullshit. Racism is a societal issue. Let's tackle racism in society first before we start pointing the finger at the border control. We have, you get people who are stuck in their ways, who maybe need a little bit of education. You know what I mean? Because you could do something that could be deemed as racism, but there's nobody in the border control who's dealt with me in a racist manner. I've got awards from the British border control. They've shown me a mad love.
and they know what I stand on. They know I'm not pro-black. You know what I mean? I'm not, I'm not pro-black. You know what I mean? I'm pro-humanity. I happen to love who I am. So I happen to love the fact that I'm Muslim. I happen to love the fact that I'm a boxing fan and a historian. I happen to love the fact that I'm black. That's it. Spencer, always insightful speaking to you. Appreciate your words. And I'll see you at the next one. Most definitely. And Big Up The Fight is right. We're award-winning podcast right now. So you better respect the team. Thank you for speaking to Boxing Comedia. Yeah.